could only say the word If you could hear me cry for help But I lift my head up to the sky From the plains that were so Oh, la, la. 
Welcome to Massey University. In recent years, New Zealand's place in the world has been changing. New Zealand has been achieving great things. They've been breaking new ground. Most importantly, they've been mapping out a special, unique Kiwi way of looking at things. There was a new New Zealand emerging. Massey played a leading role in the 20th century, and it intends to do the same in the 21st century. We want to be known as the engine of that new New Zealand. Massey University is this country's only truly nationwide campus university. We can offer you the most comprehensive program possible, but we can also offer you the opportunity to study in Albany, in Manawatu, in Wellington or anywhere in the world if you choose to study at a distance. Massey began here on the land and today the agri-food focus at our Manawatu campus reflects the importance of our land-based industries to this region, the entire nation, indeed the world. We have more than 400 researchers working on every aspect of the agri-food continuum. The world needs more food produced efficiently and sustainably from less land. Massey is uniquely placed to help industry meet that demand through our innovative research and teaching in the sciences, food technology, agricultural production and at New Zealand's only veterinary school. Here at our Manawatu campus, Massey hosts the first and only National Centre for Tertiary Teaching Excellence. We are proud of our award-winning staff and we want to ensure an exceptional and distinctive learning experience for all our students. In Wellington, New Zealand's arts capital, our campus has a creativity and design focus. Masterpieces are crafted in our schools of design and fine arts at the same campus that creates midwives, nurses and leading business researchers. And in Auckland, our Albany campus specialises in programmes with an innovation and a new economy focus. We have also established the New Zealand Institute for Advanced Study, a world-leading research environment for elite scientists. Massey has another campus which doesn't exist at all, but more than 15,000 students from across New Zealand and the world are enrolled. Massey's extramural virtual campus offers unrivaled access to a wide range of programs using the latest digital technology in any place at any time. Massey is committed to applying new technology to enable excellence in all teaching and learning. With our groundbreaking digital learning project Massey Stream, we are providing the interactive, collaborative, media-rich and personalised learning environment that learners need in the 21st century. Feeling connected in our changing, challenging world is important, especially in New Zealand setting. At Massey, we celebrate our Māori heritage and Pacific Island cultures, which have helped shape our nation. We are proud to encourage researchers who will be tomorrow's pioneers and explorers, be it in the laboratory, the paddock, the boardroom, or the skies. We support winners through our centres of research excellence and our Academy of Sport. And we know how to work with stakeholders in business, internationally and in our local communities to make it happen. So we can help you thrive in this changing world. Welcome to Massey University, the engine of the new New Zealand.
Ladies and gentlemen, Massey University's graduation ceremony is about to begin. Please stand for the official procession.
Thank you, Lorraine, for the karanga. I declare this congregation to be in session. Please remain standing and join with us in singing the traditional graduation song, Gaudiamus, the words of which are printed on page four of your program and on the screen. Ena waka, ena mana whakahi, ena tai whā, tēnā koto katoa. Ki orāna, to lofa lava, malo ila lei, whakalofa lahi atu, to loha ni, whakatolofu atu, ni sabula, ni minhau, Namaste, Mahaba. Having greeted you all in the many languages of our students, I'd like to uh, welcome you on behalf of the Massey Council to the great student city of Palmerston North and to our November graduation ceremonies. We have two ceremonies today, during which we'll recognize the achievement of some 449 students including 30 doctoral students. You come from around New Zealand, including distant students and those who studied internally at our three Massey campuses, as well as international students from around the world. You also represent five academic colleges of the university. And today, you will graduate from New Zealand's only truly national and its most relevant university. Graduation day is a day of celebration and an opportunity for the university and your whānau, family and friends to recognise your hard work and success. And today, this will be a lot easier than usual, as for the first time, Massey's graduation ceremonies will not only be filmed, but will also be streamed live on the internet. So for those of you crossing the stage today, your success and achievement will be recognised not only by those present here today, but can also be shared by family and friends and interested browsers from across the globe. In years to come, you will be able to relive what I'm sure for many of you will be one of your proudest moments. While talking of recognition, it is important that you don't forget to say a big thank you to all of those who have supported you and contributed to your success during your studies. That's your family, friends, and the faculty and support staff of Massey University. And just to ensure that you don't forget, I'd like you to join me in recognizing them now.
In my capacity as Chancellor, I have two principal responsibilities. The first is to chair the Massey Council, the body which is responsible for the governance framework within which the university operates. And the second is to lead ceremonial occasions such as this graduation ceremony. And the ceremony that we are about to go through today is very traditional, having its roots in graduation ceremonies developed some 800 years ago. Traditions such as the robes that we wear, the capping, the mace, the singing of Gaudiamus, and the awarding of honorary degrees to outstanding citizens links us to the strong heritage of universities. Universities are institutions of higher learning in which the teaching and learning environment is provided by academics who are actively involved in the generation of new knowledge through research and scholarship. You will graduate today as the beneficiary of a university education. And university graduates are critical to the social, economic and cultural development of their communities. And this ability does carry a heavy responsibility which you should not take lightly, particularly considering the investment that the community has already made in you. As a graduate of Massey University, you will inherit the reputation of this highly regarded institution. The reputation of the university is built on the achievements of its past and current faculty and its past students. Massey has had many outstanding faculty and Massey graduates have made major contributions to communities and economies all over the world. This year, as I'm sure many of you will be aware, Massey launched a campaign at the beginning of the year based around where we see ourselves in the context of New Zealand's contribution to the world. The campaign celebrated some of our defining people, those who took what they learned and experienced at Massey and put it to work to make a difference, and also those who remain at Massey and contribute to our role as the engine of the new New Zealand. People like fashion industry leader Kate Sylvester, wildlife veterinarian Kerry Morgan, and Kit McConnell, who headed the IRB's Rugby World Cup office in New Zealand this year. And while on the subject of the IRB, the coach of the successful All Blacks team, Graham Henry, is also a proud Massey graduate. We do pride ourselves on producing people who put New Zealand on the global map for its innovation, creativity, agri-food research and teaching, and its connectedness. Some of the highlights of this year for our colleges demonstrate the contributions Massey people, staff, students and graduates are making. New Zealand has faced two major disasters this year, and members of the College of Sciences have provided on-the-ground expertise at both. The university's veterinary emergency response team was called to Christchurch following February's earthquake to assist in caring for animals. The team is trained to conduct technical rescues and perform in-field veterinary treatment and disaster assessment. Based at the Institute of Veterinary, Animal and Biomedical Sciences, it's IVABS for short, the team comprises veterinarians, veterinary technologists and vet nurses, all with expertise in companion animals and livestock. In Christchurch, the team treated search and rescue dogs and went door to door checking for animals that needed assistance. The staff at IVABS are also leading the National Oiled Wildlife Response Team, currently in Tauranga, caring for more than 400 birds affected by the oil spill from the grounded container ship Rena. Kerry Morgan, who I've already mentioned, is part of that response. Within a day of the ship grounding on October the 5th, the team was in Tauranga to help deal with what has been described as perhaps our country's worst natural disaster. <clears throat> 10 of our staff have been on site since, leading the teams, washing and caring for the birds, which 
include little blue penguins, dotterels, shags and terns. And they expect to be there for the duration of the cleanup. Staff and students from the Joint Centre for Disaster Research within the College of Humanities and Social Sciences were also actively involved in the recovery operations in Christchurch. A university team was part of the urban search and rescue operations in the city. And Professor Glyn Harper from the college is the lead in the production of a definitive nine-volume history of New Zealand's involvement in World War I, which is being done in association with the New Zealand Defence Forces and the Returned Servicemen's Association. Celebrations marking Wellington's School of Design's 125th anniversary were a feature of the College of Creative Arts activities this year. The school can trace its history back to 1886 and mark the anniversary with an exhibition in the Great Hall of the Museum Building that showcased all facets of design. There has been great progress on the new College of Creative Arts building, scheduled for completion and opening by semester two of this coming year. It will provide world-class facilities for our staff and students and enable greater connections with the Wellington community. It will also provide increased opportunities for international arts students to study at Massey. I extend my thanks and best wishes to the College of Creative Arts Pro Vice-Chancellor, Professor Sally Morgan, who has successfully led the college over the last eight years and now plans to return to research and teaching as well as being the college's director of postgraduate studies. She will be succeeded by Associate Professor Claire Robinson in what promises to be a very exciting period for the college and we offer our congratulations to Claire also. The College of Business will also have a new private Pro Vice-Chancellor this year. As announced on Monday, Professor Ted Zorn, a management communications specialist and highly regarded researcher and teacher currently at the University of Waikato, will join us in March. In June, the New Zealand Centre for Personal Finance Financial Education was launched in partnership with the Westpac Bank to improve New Zealanders' knowledge, attitudes and behaviour towards money matters. And the School of Aviation within the College will mark a milestone in February next year when it celebrates 25 years of producing aviators with a difference. The school is one of only a few globally to provide professional pilot training with university accredited qualifications. The ANZ Massey Economics Challenge, a competition that challenges secondary students to tackle the savings crisis, was hosted in three locations for the first time, Manawatu, Albany and Whangarei. It has been an annual highlight on the College of Business's calendar for the past three years. At Albany this year, the College of Education launched the two-year postgraduate diploma in specialist teaching that aim, aims to overcome the barriers special needs and gifted children still face in large parts of our education sector. Distinguished Professor Bill Tunmer's world-leading literacy research was recognised by Harvard Graduate School of Education, where he is currently serving as a scientific advisor to two literacy research projects over there. And Professor Glenda Anthony was awarded the prestigious Fulbright Harkness New Zealand Fellowship. Professor Anthony, who teaches the school, at the School of Curriculum and Pedagogy at the Manawatu campus, is an expert in mathematics education and will use the fellowship to develop research in this field. College Pro Vice-Chancellor Professor James Chapman has prepared what I think is an exciting academic reform proposal that aims to position Massey among the leading providers of teaching education in the world. That proposal has garnered considerable interest both internally and externally and it is now being considered as part of the overall academic reform the university is undergoing to deliver sustainable 
and defining programs of study that are delivered in a very distinctive, innovative and accessible way. At this morning's ceremony, we're awarding certificates and diplomas and conferring degrees from the College of Sciences, the College of Education, the College of Humanities and Social Sciences, the College of Creative Arts, the New Zealand School of Music, and the Professional and Continuing Education Program. You should graduate today very proud of your achievements, but you should also be honoured by the reputational mantle that you are inheriting. I challenge you to go forward as Massey alumni, to make your own contribution, to grow your own reputation, and in doing so, add to the proud heritage that you are now part of. Lastly, I would urge you to stay connected with your alma mater and your university family through our active alumni association. So congratulations, continue to work hard, and enjoy yourselves. Norera, katona mana katitana, kia koto katoa, tena koto, tena koto, tena koto katoa. By the authority of the Council of Massey University, I, Dr. Russell Ballard, Chancellor, will now award the certificates and diplomas and confer the degrees on those to be presented and those in absentia. Chancellor. Chancellor, the Director of Teacher Education and Undergraduate Studies in the College of Education will present to you graduates and recipients of certificates and degrees in the Centre for Professional and Continuing Education, the College of Creative Arts and the College of Education. Chancellor, I have the honour to present for the Certificate in Lower Intermediate English for Speakers of Other Languages the candidate I am about to name, Anwar Fahad Almahaisen. <clears throat> Saki Ikigami. Jin Shimono Misato Sugio <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honour to present for the Certificate in Upper Intermediate English for Speakers of Other Languages the candidates I am about to name. Ho Su Shoi Kana Horeuchi <clears throat> Kayoku Nishimura <clears throat> Chancellor, I have the honour to present for the Certificate in Foundation Studies the candidate I am about to name, Ali Haza M. Al Juhif. Chancellor, I have the honour to present for graduation in the degree of Bachelor of Design with Honours, the graduand I am about to name, Yun He Lee Third Class Honours. <clears throat> Chancellor, I have the honour to present for graduation in the degree of Master of Philosophy, the graduand I am about to name 
Megan Margaret Watson with distinction. <clears throat> Chancellor, I have the honour to present for the Certificate for Teacher Aids the candidate I am about to name, Laurel Raywin Winiata. Chancellor, I have the honour to present for graduation and the degree of Bachelor of Education the graduands I am about to name, Jane Emma Hutchinson. <clears throat> Tina Debbie Johnson. <clears throat> Sally June Miles. Forward Nyahor <clears throat> Rebecca Jane Shirley <clears throat> Chancellor, I have the honour to present for graduation and the degree of Bachelor of Education, Adult Education, the graduands I am about to name. Michelle Tania Clark. Tumema Liafa <clears throat> Chancellor, I have the honour to present for graduation and the degree of Bachelor of Education Teaching, Early Years, Birth to Eight, the graduand I am about to name, Rebecca Louise Thompson. Chancellor, I have the honour to present for the Graduate Diploma of Teaching Primary the candidate I am about to name, Deborah Foon Harshan. <clears throat> Chancellor, I have the honour to present for the Postgraduate Diploma in Education the candidates I am about to name, Elizabeth Ann Kane. Vanessa Marie Lister, with distinction. <clears throat> Catherine Julia Matthews, with distinction. <clears throat> Nay Drum. <clears throat> Rainia Nina. Tutuo <clears throat> Yishuan Wong <clears throat> Chancellor, I have the honour to present for the postgraduate diploma in educational administration and leadership the candidate I am about to name, Natalie Alana Paiwai. Chancellor, I have the honour to present for the Postgraduate Diploma in Literacy Education the candidate I am about to name, Wendy Michelle Foster. <clears throat> Chancellor, I have the honour to present for graduation and the degree of Master of Counselling the graduand I am about to name, Mary Kathleen Proctor. Chancellor, I have the honour to present for graduation and the degree of Master of Education the graduands I am about to name, Joanne Dorothy Brown. <clears throat> Genevieve Raywin Green. <clears throat> Sarah 
Susan Florence Proctor. Julie Michelle Roberts, First Class Honours. Amanda Jane Taylor, First Class Honours. Latai Tuolaki Via Sakini Tuamana. Chancellor, I have the honour to present for graduation and the degree of Master of Educational Psychology the graduand I am about to name. Jennifer Marie Mary Devine, Second Class Honours. <laughs> Chancellor, the degrees are also conferred and the certificates and diplomas are also awarded to those who are in absentia. Thank you, Chancellor. Chancellor, the Director of Teaching and Learning in the College of Humanities and Social Sciences will present to you graduates and recipients of certificates and diplomas and degrees in her college. Chancellor, I have the honour to present for graduation in the degree of Bachelor of Arts the graduates I am about to name. Helen Lee Barry. Samuel Roy Biggs. Erin Elizabeth Bolton. Tevaite Melissa Chong. Rachel Mary Caroline Elizabeth Clark. Alicia Jade Davies. Patricia Frances Douglas. Timothy David Eda. Diane Jessie Foley. <laughs> Renee Patricia Graucott. <laughs> Craig James Hamilton. <laughs> Judith Elaine Hare. <laughs> Justin Luke Hodson. Sarah Patricia Jackson. <laughs> Joanna Margaret Wilmot Jeffries Nesetin. <laughs> Tara Dean Kloss Nedelatul. <laughs> Chang Shu Li. Joanna Love. <laughs> Yasmin Mahagna. <laughs> Kate Elizabeth McConnell. <laughs> James Peter McLean. <laughs> Kaho Arthur Ng. Ralph Scott. <laughs> Kamal Tassin. <laughs> Amanda Thompson. <laughs> Sunia Parveen Veran Hall. Emily Cherie Wall. <laughs> Emily
Emily Marie Zander, Sonia Marie Zander. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Bachelor of Communication the graduates I'm about to name. Briar Linda Graham. <laughs> Crystal Dion Wayne. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Bachelor of Defense Studies the graduates I'm about to name. Richard Peter Pleasance. Mark Brian Richards. Brooke Danielle Tohi Ariki. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Bachelor of Nursing, the graduand I'm about to name, Daisy Maddenheyer. Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Bachelor of Resource and Environmental Planning, the graduates I'm about to name. Scott Laurie Major, Second Class Honors. <laughs> Reagan John Mansfield. <laughs> Michelle Perrot. Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the conjoint degree of Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science, the graduand I'm about to name. Stephen Paul Hodgson, Massey Scholar. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honor to present for, gra for graduate diploma in arts, the candidates I am about to name. Carla Marie Drayton. <laughs> Samantha Diane Kelly with distinction. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honor to present for, for graduate diploma in emergency management the candidate I am about to name, Matthew William Smith. Chancellor, I have the honor to present for the postgraduate diploma in arts the candidate I am about to name, Roshini Gounden. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honor to present for the postgraduate diploma in development studies the cand candidates I am about to name, Vilay Van Porn Prasut. Melanie Punzalan Pimentel. <laughs> Ronisera Letoi Evi Pai Pai Sawanga. <laughs> Gloria Tepakai Saluya, with distinction. Chancellor, I have the honor to present for the postgraduate diploma in Maori Visual Arts the candidate I'm about to name, Louis Ratana. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honor to present for the postgraduate diploma in nursing the candidates I am about to name, Karen Ann Mariana Blair. Deborah Joan Cromie with distinction. <laughs> Catherine Jane Marie Grant with distinction. <laughs> Janice Ann Norman. <laughs> 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 
Chancellor, I have the honor to present for the postgraduate diploma in rehabilitation the candidates I am about to name. Lynn Ann Cooper, with distinction. Yasuyo Yamaguchi. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Bachelor of Arts with Honors the graduates I'm about to name. Victoria Audrey Clark, First Class Honors. <laughs> Kenneth McPherson, First Class Honors. Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Master of Arts the graduates I'm about to name. Natasha Jane Brown. <laughs> Alana Catherine Campbell, Second Class Honors. <laughs> Marcel Curley, with distinction. Amber Dawn Fletcher with distinction. <laughs> Megan Elizabeth Hodges, first class honors. <laughs> Robin Ann McLaren. <laughs> James William Montgomery with distinction. Robert Timothy Taylor, First Class Honours. <laughs> Gerald Gordon Leslie Winera, with distinction. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honour to present for graduation in the degree of Master of Defence Studies, the graduand I'm about to name. Richard Anthony Campbell, Second Class Honours. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honour to present for graduation in the degree of Master of Nursing, the graduates I am about to name. Sue Ann Anderson, Second Class Honours. <laughs> Dorothy Chimwayange Nemushawa. Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Master of Resource and Environmental Planning, the graduand I'm about to name, Lee Margaret Matthews. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Master of Social Work Applied, the graduand I'm about to name, Jonathan Allen Aitken. Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Master of Philosophy, the graduates I'm about to name. Edward Thomas Cameron, with distinction. <laughs> David Thomas Evans. <laughs> Jane Christine Huya Hopkirk, second class honors. Ursula Louise Instone. <laughs> Alicia Jane Kotsapas with distinction. <laughs> Richard Bernard McGeorge. <laughs> Stephen Matthew Palmer with distinction. Chancellor, the degrees are also conferred and the certificates and diplomas are also awarded to those who are in absentia. Thank you, Chancellor.
It's now my pleasure. It's now my pleasure to invite Mr. Simon Barnett, Chief Executive Officer of the Company of Oboe, to address the graduands. Uh, Simon established a company importing, manufacturing and distributing tennis equipment in 1975. Eleven years later, the company moved into the importation of field hockey protective equipment. By 1990, they were designing and manufacturing their own hockey protective gear and by 1994, equipment designed specifically for the field hockey goalie was launched under the Oboe brand. Within four years, the company had become a world leader in this area, and at the 2000 Athens Olympics, Oboe was used by 77% of all the goalies participating. Oboe products are sold now in over 60 countries, and they are market leaders in all of those countries. Global market share is in excess of 60%. And the company has won a number of major national awards. And Simon has an honours degree in marketing from Massey University and continues to guest lecture to the introductory marketing class at Massey. Simon. This is very cool. I've actually been asked to speak at this morning and this afternoon's graduation ceremonies, and when I first heard this, I thought the university really valued my thoughts so much that they wanted everyone to hear them. Then I realised it was probably because they understood it would take me two goes to get it right. So, Chancellor, thank you very much for, for the words and the opportunity to be part of this marvellous celebration today. My association with Massey goes back many years and I have great memories of my time as a student. I want to tell you two quick stories. The business faculty used to organise a winter lecture series and would invite interesting people, mainly from business and politics, to speak to students and staff on a Friday afternoon. Bob Jones was one of those speakers and his address was advertised as being titled Why We Should Farm Women. Needless to say, the refectory was packed. He didn't once refer to the advertised topic, but the place was sold out. This was one of my only early lessons in PR, or at least catching people's attention. More importantly, this lecture series established a habit I've tried to maintain of my, for the rest of my life, a habit of listening, thinking and questioning. My time at Massey not only equipped me for business and shaped my thinking, but it also helped me make me curious and aware of the wider issues of life, and I do hope it's done the same for you. A second memory is of a tutorial in my first year of study. It was held in a corner room of the Social Science Tower and was led by a young junior lecturer. His name was Steve Mahari. We explored and debated the meaning of relevance of culture within the business environment. Given this occurred 36 years ago, it was clearly an interesting and, and possibly well-led tutorial. Having been in business now for many years, I realised the critical importance of culture and the role of leadership, that the role of leadership plays in establishing and maintaining a relevant culture. I suspect Steve has learnt the same lessons in the roles he has filled subsequently. I know you were probably distracted when you came in the front door today, but hopefully you noticed the sculpture as you walked toward the front door. It is made of bronze which starts out as a commodity, a raw block of metal, ugly to the eye, rough to the touch, and meaningless. If you wait a moment, I've got something. This is an ingot of bronze. It's, um, as you can tell, it's rather heavy. Um, but in this form, it is these things, ugly, rough and meaningless. Through the care and creativity of the sculptor Paul Dibble, this raw bronze commodity has been transformed into something with real beauty, meaning and value. This reminds me of a comment made by King Christian IV of Denmark over 500 years ago. He told his people, 
We must add beauty to everything we do, because if we continue to sell our products as raw food, we will not make a high enough living to have a good life. We must add beauty to everything that we do. Clever guy, I think. I think New Zealand could learn a lot from someone like King Christian. Denmark, like New Zealand, was and still is a major food producer, but has gone on to add a lot of beauty to a wide range of exports and now enjoys a substantially better standard of living than New Zealand. Too much of New Zealand's exports are still commodity-based, and as much as anything, it's, up to, it's your job to help remedy this. Today I'd like to talk a little bit about the past, the now, and what these changes might mean to you. When I first started in business, you had to go to the government to get an import licence, to import anything. I was 18 years old and I applied for an import licence for some table tennis balls and bats to augment the table tennis tables I was making in the backyard of my parents' house. I was told that I needed a history of importing before I could be granted a licence. This didn't make much sense to me, so I climbed on a bus and I went to the offices of trade and industry in Wellington. Perhaps it was the school uniform I wore to the meeting. Well, it's a slight exaggeration, but um, you, you get my drift. Or my naive enthusiasm for life. Uh, but I got my import licence. Import licensing was one of just one reflection of how closed our economy was. There was a very low level of competition, so you did not need to do anything special or uh, give a very good service to make a living. From a business perspective, it meant she'll be right was OK. In every sense, it was an inward-looking economy, narrowly based on primary products. All we needed to do was grow food efficiently, put it on a ship, and send it to England to make a good enough living. Communication and travel posed their own problems. For example, air travel in real terms cost five times as much in 1960 as it does now. Exports and imports were almost solely carried by sea. Only a few years ago it cost $2.74 a minute to talk to Europe on the telephone. Now it's virtually free. Better still, you can Skype and, and see the person at no cost. Not only was communication expensive, but it was slow, with letters and telex being the main methods of communication. Distance then, indeed, was our tyranny. However, our, isola our isolation meant that New Zealanders had to be inventive, and that's where the number eight wire habit and phrase came from. It also meant we had to be broad thinking and great problem solvers. Perhaps also on the positive side, the importance of family, of balance of life between uh, leisure and work, and of social responsibility were well understood. We were, and in most respects still are, a caring, resourceful, hard-working and optimistic society. It is critical as we respond to today's global challenges that we maintain and nurture these traits as a society and as individuals. Turning to the now, today in both the global and the New Zealand economies, everything is open. There are virtually no restrictions on the ability to import or export, almost no duties payable between nations. It is a truly global economy. There is more affluence and higher expectations. Three weeks ago, it was announced that the world's population had just passed 7 billion. When I was born, and it wasn't that long ago, uh, the world population was 3 billion. Competition is now intense. Communication is now rapid and very cheap. People are connected. An idea, a phrase, a fashion, or a new product can sweep the world in a matter of weeks. Markets, particularly mass consumer markets for both products and services, are, however, dominated by world brands with a great deal of financial and distribution power. The environment is also one of rapid change. For example, some of you will own a product that didn't exist 17 months ago, called the Apple iPod. Today, over 20 so iPads, sorry, iPods are a bit older. The iPad is 17 months old. Over that time, 28 million units have been sold with a sales value in excess of $30 billion. 17 months, $30 billion sales. That category did not exist 17 months ago. I cannot help thinking what the next iPad will be. Will you be part of this? 
And perhaps more importantly, do you want to be part of this new game-breaking product or service? So what do these changes mean to you? We have a phrase in our family that says, you can do anything if you try. This certainly applies to each and every one of us here today. Today, in many respects, opportunities are limitless. In this globalised world with very easy and cheap communication and the ability to move ideas and products from one part of the world to another with ease, the personal and business opportunities are limitless. This said, I think you have two major challenges. The first challenge is to find ways to deliver something remarkable something that stands out from your competitors, so much so that people not, not only want to buy from you or employ you, but want to talk to other people about you. Being the same as everyone else doesn't count. Copying doesn't count. R&D to some still means rob and duplicate, but this approach adds little value nor enables you to enter markets or successfully compete or get a special job. Importantly, it's no fun. Only true innovation is relevant in today's intensely competitive markets and society. While you're at it, think globally. Why limit your thinking and opportunities to New Zealand and ignore 99.4% of the world's population? That's right, the New Zealand population is only 0.06% of the world's population. And think niche, preferably niche-niche. Because in many respects, we New Zealanders are ideally suited to niche markets, and on the global scale, some of these niche markets can be very large. The second big challenge, and it's actually the most important one, is to find something you really want to do. Find something, anything, I don't care what it is, but find something that spins your wheels, puts a bounce in your step, and lights the fire in your gut. No matter what you do, find something that you can love doing, no matter what it is, and no, no matter what it is, please be forever curious, because you can be sure that your first idea or first execution of that idea won't be the best. There are always ways to improve and new and exciting opportunities just waiting around the corner. Lastly, no matter what you do, please take King Christian's advice and add beauty and emotion to it. On the way out, have a look at the sculpture, which incidentally is called Who's Afraid? Look at the beauty, the joy, the exuberance of the dancer, confidently taking on a hostile world. You can be that dancer. You have been well equipped to face the world by your family, your friends, perhaps your siblings, your teachers, and certainly your lecturers during your time at Massey University. Don't be afraid. This is your chance, this is your life. Please grab it with both hands and give it a good shake. Thank you and all the very best for the future. Thank you, Simon, for the inspiration that you are to our students, uh, both as a successful, innovative uh, businessman and for your words today, just recounting how important leadership and culture are in business, about adding value to what you do, and that can be in terms of beauty, usefulness, and above all, something which is unique. But always go after something which you can put your personal enthusiasm into, but don't forget your social responsibility and keeping a balanced life. Thank you. We'll now proceed with the conferment of degrees and the award of university certificates and diplomas. Chancellor. Chancellor, the Bachelor of Veterinary Science Program Director of the College of Sciences will present to you graduates and recipients of certificates, diplomas and degrees in his college. Chancellor, I have the honour to present for the Diploma in Meat Technology the candidate I am about to name, Aaron Daniel Tribe. <clears throat> Chancellor.
Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Bachelor of Agricultural Science, the graduate I am about to name, Graham George Hull. <clears throat> Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Bachelor of Applied Science, the graduates I am about to name, Victoria Patricia Francis Bloomer. Fiona Rosemary Brown. Rebecca Jan Clayton. Christopher Francis Maguire. Rachel Marie Phillips. Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Bachelor of Construction, the graduands I am about to name. Luke Benton. Charlene Karen Colas. Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Bachelor of Engineering, the graduands I am about to name. Letitia Victoria Fitchett, second class honors. Tetsua Handa. D. Wang. Derek Craig Massey Wills. <clears throat> Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Bachelor of Environmental Management, the graduand I am about to name, Isabel Frances Oldfield. Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Bachelor of Health Sciences, the graduands I am about to name, Sarah Ann Riley. <clears throat> Garth Jane Weiser. Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Bachelor of Information Sciences, the graduands I am about to name. Sadia Manzor Awan. Christine Jane Cox. Fatahila. Yi Ting Lee. <clears throat> Huang Zhou Lim. <clears throat> Yang Shu. <clears throat> Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Bachelor of Medical Laboratory Science, the graduand I am about to name. Janine. Eleanor Naidu. <clears throat> Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Bachelor of Science, 
the graduates I am about to name. Aziza Oluwatobi Ashiru. Jonathan Guy Brook. Christopher Malcolm Brown. Bridie Ann Carr. Timothy Aaron Cheney. Sujong Chen. Penfi Ding. Ruby Donna Esther. Tracy Michelle Gagin. Helen Mary Eve Graham. Jessica Elizabeth Groot. Seung Jiong Hong. Irene Smita Isaac. Carol Joy Johnson. Amy Luin Huey Koei. Minaga Kulanthavilu. Yan Liu. Robert Mark Mitchell. Amanda Cheryl Moyes. Deepika Naidu. Charlene Newhoff. Kimberly Ann Oliver. Rebecca Louise Parsons. Danielle Kimberly Colby Roberts. Sabrina Karina Shelkey. Shane John Seal. Oliver Lawrence Koinash Sheehan. Catherine Christine Smythe. Chancellor, I have the honour to present for the Graduate Diploma in Environmental Health the candidate I am about to name, Rhys Russell Sanson. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honour to present for the Graduate Diploma in Quality Systems the, the candidate I am about to name, Brian Bond. Chancellor, I have the honour to present for the Graduate Diploma in Science the candidates I am about to name. James Lane McLeod. <laughs> Mamta Mirotra, with distinction. Okay. Chancellor, I have the honour to present for the postgraduate in construction management the candidate I am about to name, Jessica Eloise Allen. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honour to present for the postgraduate diploma in environmental management the candidates I am about to name, Kane Daniel Himara.
Andres Jaramillo Valencia. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honor to present for the postgraduate diploma in logistics and supply chain management the candidate I am about to name, Atalanka Kudileanja Don, with distinction. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honor to present for the postgraduate diploma in quality systems the candidate I am about to name, Simplicio Hove. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honor to present for the postgraduate diploma in science the candidates I am about to name. Gis Job. <laughs> Domitia Merlin Joseph. <laughs> Emmy Sakata. <laughs> Simon Iro Sifa. Chancellor, I have the honor to present for the postgraduate diploma in veterinary public health the candidate I am about to name, Shija Jacob. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Bachelor of Environmental Management with honors the graduate I am about to name, Joshua Caleb Melville First Class Honours. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honour to present for graduation in the degree of Bachelor of Information Sciences with honours, the graduand I am about to name, Joseph Timothy Yandel, Second Class Honours. <clears throat> Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Bachelor of Science with Honors, the graduands I am about to name. Diane Frances Houghton, First Class Honors. <clears throat> Ashley Lance Murphy, First Class Honors. <clears throat> Briar Lee Taylor Smith. First Class Honours. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honour to present for graduation in the degree of Master of Agri-Science, the graduate I'm about to name, Natalia de la Paz Martin, with distinction. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Master of Applied Science, the graduands I am about to name. Catherine Jane MacArthur, Second Class Honors. <laughs> Naomi Lois Emma McBride. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Master of Engineering, the graduands I am about to name. Thomas Johannes Laurentius Leyen, with distinction. <laughs> Shuai Liang. <laughs> Kenneth Everett York, with distinction. Jason Zhu, with distinction. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Master of Information Science, the graduand I am about to name, Wei Ren, with distinction. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Master of Science, the graduands I am about to name. 
Kirsty Louise Baker, First Class Honours. Francis Emily Cray, Second Class Honours. Elizabeth Ann Crimp. <laughs> Melissa Jane Griffin, with distinction. <laughs> Nikki Ann Minards, with distinction. Nikola Palevich, with distinction. <laughs> Jennifer Ann Peck, first class honours. <laughs> Emma Ann Phillips, first class honours Massey Scholar. Adele Smith Nidaniel, Second Class Honours. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honour to present for graduation in the degree of Master of Technology the graduate I am about to name, Paul Jeffrey Compton. <laughs> Chancellor, the degrees are also conferred and the certificates and diplomas are also awarded to those who are in absentia. Thank you, Chancellor. It's now my pleasure to invite Jesse Stratford, singer, to present an item to Canon Kiane by Ernesto de Curtis and accompanied by Morva Croxon. Jesse is currently studying at the New Zealand School of Music in Wellington, training in classical voice under New Zealand tenor Richard Greger. Jesse is a Palmerston North boys old boy and enjoyed an illustrious career in the school music department, starring in musical productions and singing in the school's well-known and highly successful OK Chorale. Jesse won the two, 2002, 2010 National Youth Jazz Festival Vocalist Award and is hoping to continue his study overseas at the Royal College of Music in London. Jesse. Mai 
E tutto dorme, tutto dorme, amore, e i sullo veglio perché vegli amore. Su canon chi ogne, chi ogne re. Notti a rostaie, voglio a te, voglio a te. Chi sua così va, non ha te fatta vedere. Thank you, Jesse, for that piece. You have a very fine voice, and I'm sure your ambition of studying at the Royal College of Music in London will be fulfilled. I'd also like to thank Morva, who was one of my predecessors as Chancellor of this university. I will now proceed with the conferment of degrees and the award of university certificates and diplomas. Tēnā koutou, kia ora mai tātou. Now, Chancellor, we now reach the point in our ceremony where we acknowledge the work of our doctoral students who are making their way to the stage. We will recognise 30 of them uh, this morning and this afternoon, with the majority of them uh, coming to this uh, particular ceremony. Uh, they are here, as you know, uh, because they're highly talented people. Uh, they have a passion for their work and they, of course, are very hard-working. We are here because we want to provide them with the opportunity to show that talent, that passion, and that hard work. We wish you well with all of your work in the future. We will watch your progress with interest. Go well in whatever you might do. Now, Chancellor, I have the honour to present for graduation in the degree of Doctor of Clinical Psychology the graduands I am about to name. Amber Jane Barry, Doctoral Scholar. <clears throat> Ms Barry's research provided New Zealand's first systematic and comprehensive review of outcome measures from multidisciplinary interventions with young people. Based on this review, the Ohio Youth Problems Functioning and Satisfaction Scale was recommended as the best available for New Zealand because it offers the necessary balance of breadth, of content, brevity, and psychometric strength. Dr. Barry. I should note again, this is quite a long list, so feel free to make some noise and relax as this list uh, goes across the stage. Philippa Marie Croy. <clears throat> Ms Croy found that the provision of psycho-oncology interventions by New Zealand Psycho-Oncology Service significantly reduced distress in patients and family members. It also significantly increased their levels of well-being and coping. Five factors were perceived by clients to be the most beneficial. These included receiving individualised support, 
talking to someone who was not their family, receiving expert professional support, regaining a sense of control and service availability and flexibility. Dr. Croy. Chancellor, I have the honour to present for graduation and degree of Doctor of Education the graduand I am about to name. Athuji Donna Kalyani Wijaya Wadana. <clears throat> Ms Wija Wadana explored the potential of the problem-based learning approach or PBL an alternative teacher education program for enhancing environmental related activities in primary pre-service teacher education in Sri Lanka. She found PBL an excellent way of enhancing primary science teacher education and looked at how it could be transferred to the Sri Lankan context. Dr. Wujawadana. Prabhu Balan. <clears throat> Immunoglobulins, or LGS, proteins synthesized by animals are the first line of defense against invading pathogens. They can be extracted from animal blood and used prophylactically and therapeutically. Mr. Balan used physiological, immunological, molecular and microbiological techniques to show that feeding an ovine algae fraction enhances growth performance, modulates various indices of immune function and increases the numbers of beneficial lactobacilli in the gut. Dr. Balan. Alistair John Hopton Clement. <clears throat> Mr. Clement focused on reconstructing sea level changes in the New Zealand region during the past 10,000 years to provide context for an investigation of the evolution of the Lower Manawatu Valley during the same period. A 3D model of the subsurface degree sorry, stratigraphy of the valley was constructed, as were paleogeographic maps and a series of conceptual models of the evolution of the valley during the last 10,000 years. Dr. Clement. Warnakula Sura Mary Ann Deepika Binosha Fernando. <clears throat> Ms. Fernando investigated the role of rice fibre in stimulating the growth and corresponding SCFA or short chain fatty acid formation of human faecal microflora in individual co cultures of probiotics. The information obtained in the study suggests that rice fibre could be used to prevent human diseases by promoting healthy human gut flora, supporting the idea that rice is an important natural source of dietary fibre. Dr. Fernando. Luke Anthony Fullard, Doctoral Scholar. <clears throat> Hydrothermal eruptions are similar to geysers in that they erupt liquid water and steam, yet can be much larger and less predictable. Mathematical models have been used in the past to study these eruptions, but none have dealt with the initiation of an eruption. Mr. Fullard developed a new model 
and numerical method to solve the associated flow equations of this model to stimulate the first few seconds of, a, of an eruptive event. From this, he was able to infer conditions which increase the risk of hydrothermal eruption. Dr. Fullard. Lorena Gibson. Ms. Gibson conducted ethnographic fieldwork with grassroots level organisations running development initiatives led by Muslim women in Hora in Kolkata in India and Christian women in Leh, Paupau, New Guinea. Her work identified a number of side effects of development, including collective hope and collective agency which sustains collective action in the face of adversity and failure. Dr. Gibson. <laughs> Fazana Nisa Gaunda. Ms. Gounder's research is on life narratives about the indentured labourers in Fiji. Using frameworks from linguistics and psychology, her research uncovers moments of resistance and accommodation, showing that understanding the indentured labour period in Fiji from the inside must take into account narrators' roles as characters, their sense of agency, as well as the culture and context in which the stories were told. Dr. Gounder. Ian David Hay, Doctoral Scholar. <clears throat> Mr. Hay investigated the opportunistic pathogen Pseudomonas aeruginosa. This bacterium is important in the chronic pulmonary infection of cystic fibrosis patients. Mr. Hay identified two novel mechanisms the bacteria uses to regulate the production of lignate. He also characterised several proteins involving the secretion of alignate. In doing so, the first protein-protein interactions of a long time proposed multi-protein secretion complex were identified. Dr. Hay. There's some interesting big words in here, by the way, that you might like to corner people after and say, so what is oregonosa? What, what's that about? <laughs> Stephen Kenneth Wilfred Lang. Mr. Lang investigated how non-Māori councillors in Aotearoa, New Zealand, respond to the call by Māori for non-Māori to honour and respect the indigenous culture. He found that the development of bicultural responsiveness was slow and prone to relapse, though gains had been made. Non-Māori, through engagement and cultural consultation with Māori, need to be willing to acknowledge mistakes, make amends and become wiser in the process. Dr. Lang. To Waka Melbourne. The Venerable Te Waka Melbourne examined Māori spirituality, Te Wairua Rua ko Mingo Mingo o Te Māori, or the spiritual whirlwind of the Māori. Mr Melbourne makes the point that within the confinements of the Marae, Te Wairua ko Mingo Mingo o Te Māori reinforces meaningful ongoing spiritual synergies and evolving dialogues for Māori and non-Māori. Dr Melbourne.
Wiriferaiti, Umbana Alatha, Nainotha. Ms. Nainotha investigated the influence of the indigenous Fijian way of life on community based marine conservation, or what she calls CBMC, in Fiji. She argues that the Fijian way of life has to adapt to external changes to survive and remain relevant. This adaptation can be facilitated by dialogue or talanoa, though which CBMC stakeholders can share, reflect upon and reframe their worldviews, world perceptions and ultimately their practices for the success of CBMC. Dr. Nayatho. <laughs> Zachary Joseph Schlater <laughs> Mr Schlater established and validated an exercise based experimental model to evaluate human thermoregulatory behaviour. This, using this model and other interventions, he was successful in identifying that skin temperature, thermal perception and circulatory adjustments all uniquely contribute to the control of this behaviour. Dr Schlader. Helen Julia Snell. <laughs> Mrs Snell measured health activation in New Zealand adults with insulin-treated diabetes and explored relationships with factors impacting on it and self-care. This study showed that in addition to diabetes-specific expertise, diabetes care should be based on humanistic principles of caring, mutuality, respectfulness and reciprocity. Importantly, the diversity of the multiple disciplines within the diabetes healthcare team needs to be recognised and the unique skills practised in concert. Dr Snell. Superporn Sudnong Bua. <laughs> Ms. Sudnong Bua investigated whether elderly people in a remote rural area of northeast Thailand felt abandoned after the economic migration of their children. Traditionally, Thai elderly prefer to remain at home and be supported by at least one of their children living with them. She found that some participants who followed Buddha's teaching were better able to accept and endure their poorer life circumstances and they maintain more positive relationships with their children despite limited contact and limited financial support. Dr. Sud Nong Bua. Natasha Madeleine Swainson. <laughs> Ms. Swainson investigated the effectiveness of various methane mitigation technologies. Sheep supplemented with monensin and coconut oil, either individually or in combination, did not result in consistent reductions of methane per unit of feed intake. Feed them chicory, however, reduced methane, methane per unit of feed intake compared with the pasture and could provide a practical means of reducing emissions in the future. Dr. Swainson. Bindi Ann Thompson, Thomas, sorry, Bindi Ann Thomas. 
Dr. Thomas assessed the conservation benefits and technical effectiveness of wildlife satellite tracking technology. The four case studies undertaken revealed important ecological insights on the in situ movement and behaviour of the African elephant, the New Zealand bush falcon, the estuarine crocodile and the northern royal albatross. Her research shows how the use of this technology provides conservation agencies with a better understanding of wildlife behaviour and strengthens their ability to improve wildlife management planning. Dr Thomas. Jasmine Sarah Thompson. <laughs> Ms. Thompson investigated the effect of consuming leucine protein and carbohydrate after exercise on prolonged cycling performance compared to carbohydrate foods. She found leucine rich protein and carbohydrate co ingestion following exercise beneficial to subsequent performance. By assessing gene transcription and protein signaling in the muscle, she was able to explore the mechanisms behind this. Dr. Thompson. <laughs> hey, Manita. Isabel Trejo Araya. <clears throat> High pressure processing is a novel food technology used to extend the shelf life of foods whilst maintaining most of their fresh characteristics such as flavour, odour and nutritional attributes. By understanding the mechanisms occurring at the cellular level, Ms Trejo was able to provide further understanding of many quality attributes that change during high pressure processing and therefore identify further commercial opportunities for a range of horticultural products. Dr Trejo. Corina Adele Tucker, Doctoral Scholar. <clears throat> Ms. Tuck Tucker investigated the politics of the social movement that formed to resist genetic engineering in Aotearoa, New Zealand, from the late 1990s. By combining diversity with unity, GE resistance has become a powerful political presence. This combination of networking and identity meant that the movement has endured by adapting to changing circumstances and succeeding in mobilising large numbers of people along the way. Dr Tucker. Andi Alisi Talatoka Vun i ni a bu la nei bola bola. This Vun ni a bu la used Fullan's educational change theory and the Avano Indigenous Framework to examine the introduction of AusAid funding 2004 Fiji Diploma of Nursing Curriculum. The research showed indeed argued that neocolonialism underpinned the top-down decision-making of indigenous nursing leaders and that in dealing with their indigenous subordinates they emulated the dominant behaviour of their former colonisers. Dr Bun I Ni A Bula. David Colin Woods, Doctoral Scholar. 
Metaheuristics are advanced problem-solving algorithms that attempt to find the best solution to com complicated combinatorial problems such as vehicle routing, airline scheduling, and inventory control. Mr. Woods developed a framework such, such that metaheuristics can be expressed as subsets of modules from a common library with a common culture. Novel metaheuristic concepts and several new methods for creating test problems and modeling were developed. Dr. Woods. Samad Zera. <laughs> Mr. Zera investigated the creation of a virtual daure or family social circle via Persian language weblogs amongst a group of Iranian migrants in Australia. The findings suggest that virtual spaces are important to them to meet and express their identities in ways relevant to their Iranian ethnicity and to manage emotional responses to migration. The formation of communities from mutual readership of the blogs means that feedback and support is given in a way that reinforces cultural identity. Dr. Zarei. At the conclusion of this ceremony, guests are requested to remain in their seats until the processions have assembled in the foyer. I declare this congregation to be adjourned. Please stand and join with us in singing the national anthem, God Defend New Zealand, the words of which are printed on page five of the program and on the screen. And please begin with the Maori version of the anthem. 